The Spanish Action Committee of Chicago was created as a response to the Division Street riots of 1966 that occurred due to the compounded effects of poverty, prejudice, and the displacement of Hispanics in Chicago. The committee's primary goal was to demonstrate to Chicago Spanish-speaking citizens that they could and needed to play a major role in determining and directing their destiny. On June 12, 1966, the first Puerto Rican parade in Chicago took place. It was during this parade that the first ever Puerto Rican riot in the U.S. occurred. The riot was a response to the shooting of a Puerto Rican man by Chicago police and it lasted three days. I was in my brother's house with his wife and his kids. And when I hear the whole thing, I came out and I see people running with palos, with sticks, and guns and things. Really, really big. They, they were protesting about a lot of things, you know. That, that was a lot of abuse to the Puerto Rican, you know. <coughs> they don't know. So they get together, I think they came bangers and everybody else, and they said, they, that was really ugly. I don't even know those people to know about mm. this, because that was really, that was like shameful. But at the same time, they were defending a cause, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think the riot triggered, you know, but mm -hmm. it was all these other things. And I think, um, so it was, it was housing discrimination. It was the fact that um, in terms of the school systems, that they, the poor schools, poor housing, uh, you know, not having access, equal access to employment. I think it was all of those things, police brutality. Um, was also something that was affecting them and you know what with the ways in which they were being stopped or harassed um, you know in their own neighborhoods uh, so I think all of those things combined um, that when you know this particular episode happened you know it just became it just became something that wound up erupting and became much greater than just you know just the shooting itself it became about all these things and so but I think it's also important to place it in the context of the 1960s daily in this moment you know, the early 1960s, everyone feared that there was going to be a huge riot in the African American community as had happened in Watts, as had happened in Detroit and things like that. So I think all of the energy was being placed on appeasing African Americans to, to a way, in, in, in a way that they were also ignoring what was happening in Puerto Rican communities that was very similar to what was happening in African American communities. And so then it was something that was very much unexpected. And I think that was the other thing, is that they weren't prepared to deal with the fact that you had this other population of people that, that decided that, you know, they had had enough in terms of their treatment by the city itself. The Division Street riots drew attention to the problems of poverty, housing, education, and civic communications not only Puerto Ricans, but many Spanish-speaking Chicago residents were faced with. The needs of the Spanish-speaking communities were not being met, and the Division Street riots ensured that they were at least heard. Many Latino Chicagoans were faced with the problem of identity. They were Latino Americans, not just Americans. They wanted to benefit from all of the rights guaranteed to them as Americans without losing their culture. This especially was a problem for the Puerto Rican Americans who were born with U.S. citizenship. Many Latinos felt that they were not allowed the same rights and opportunities other white Americans were. 
This discrimination of Latinos in Chicago led to a sense of second-class citizenship. Hard to believe our own ancestors ever acted like that. Though we've certainly come a long way since then. But now, these Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Have you ever heard a bunch of them babbling together? Brother. You know something else? I understand most of them don't even bother to get married. Well, that's what we have a welfare department for. Goodness knows we pay enough taxes. Why they won't even learn our language is what gets me. And the way they tear down our real estate values. Listen, no matter what you say, migrants are doggone lucky today. I wonder if any of them realize just how lucky. Let me remind you of something many of us overlook when discussing the Puerto Rican situation. These people are not immigrants. By their birthright, this land belongs to them as much as it does to you or to me. They are citizens like us. So it means that while you hold the status of U.S. citizen, you don't have all the rights that come with that status of U.S. citizen. And so that's what a lot of people tend to talk about when they talk about a second-class citizenship. So, for example, Puerto Ricans on the island, although they're all considered U.S. citizens, they can't vote for U.S. president. So therefore, they don't have the same kind of, their citizenship is not the same kind of rights as other Puerto Ricans. This is the same thing that happened with African Americans in terms of fighting for voting rights, right? So while they were citizens, um, the fact that they couldn't vote meant that they didn't have full citizenship rights. So that's the, that's the distinction that people kind of talk about. In order to kind of deal with the situation, they thought that, okay, let's bring war on po or, well, yeah, the war on poverty funds in to think about job training, to think about um, education. Uh, to think about more social services in these communities. And so this is then also where you start to see the pop-up of, of different social service agencies among Puerto Ricans, whether, you know, and that it turned out to be people that might have worked with, uh, you know, different kinds of organizations, informal organizations, that then they, they you know, decided that they were going to do these more formal organizations to get federal funding in order to support um, these community projects. <laughs> In 1966, the Spanish Action Committee of Chicago was founded by Juan Diaz and was one of the first Puerto Rican organizations in Chicago. Well, the Spanish Action Committee came into existence uh, because of the riots of 1966, of June 1966. Uh, at that time, there was no leadership in the uh, Puerto Rican community, and uh, the Spanish Action Committee took the initiative to, to uh, set up an organization and try to build out of this organization some leadership within the community. The mission of the Spanish Action Committee of Chicago, we got him over there, mm -hmm. but uh, I can tell you, uh, which is uh, to motivate our community to get educated in order for us to be able to understand our rights. If if you get an education, then you are going to learn how important it is for you to register and to vote. Okay, why? Because through education, we are going to be able to reach our goal, which is our goal to be able to one day to get possible social changes in our community. The Spanish Action Committee of Chicago continues to serve the Latino community today. The committee provides a variety of services that help the Latino community with issues such as housing, health and welfare, and civic relations. Over the past 48 years, the Spanish Action Committee has established a legal committee to open communications with police, as well as to work on problems arising between police and community residents. The committee has acted as an intermediary between police and local youth organizations, provided legal assistance for the community residents, and has attacked the community's lack of participation in the electoral process by creating a committee to conduct door-to-door -door canvassing, registration, and voter education. In all these ways, the committee has helped to fight for and protect the rights of Latinos in Chicago. The committee has also been instrumental in educating the community about their rights and getting Latinos to play a part in their communities. Through the committee's efforts, social change has been achieved, and as long as the committee is around, more change is expected. The mentality, the philosophy, never, never change and never will change. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still fighting for our right. We are still fighting for what we believe, and we are well convinced 
that our people deserve the, be the, the best mm -hmm. because we are responsible, dedicated citizens.